we'll be back here shortly with a match between okay. Jeff Abernathy and Hunter White. Should be fun. Oh no. Okay, whatever. It's lost to time. Here we are. With what should turn out to be a fun, fun match. Jeff Abernathy versus Hunter White. Fun. <laughs> Hunter wins the lag. So we are rack your own. 
And he is up to break. Race to two. Let's see how things go here. I'm like really excited because now that I've played my first couple of matches of one pocket, I'm hoping I know what to look for here. Hunter chooses the left side pocket here. So we're going to do this. We're going to do one of these. And then grab our go with the R. I'm stoked. Let's go. So he's looking to play bank here into the stack to push some more of the balls there to his side of the table. I do not dislike that. He had very good key ball control there. Now, Hunter, it looks like he's going to play rail first into the, uh, oh, okay. I didn't even think he was going to hit the top side of that eight ball. Fantastic shot. Just want to get a good piece of it. To play the cue ball. The focus on that shot was completely on the cue ball here and put it in a tough spot here for Jeff to play it. So now he's going to play the bank into the three for the eight ball. What a great shot. Oh my God. That was fantastic. We're going to go and uh, give a little. A little replay here. That was a fun little shot. That opens up the table a little bit for a couple more shots here. The eight and the four looking pretty, pretty nice here for Jeff. He's with a really good speed. Gets good shape on the four, but he's gonna be. He's going to stretch on the table here to hit this. Yeah, he's already looking for the bridge. Problem here, okay, so this is going to be a good learning shot here because I'm not sure if you're trying to hit into the stack. I don't like hitting into the stack because you're hitting everything into Hunter's side, which is abysmal. I think you're drawing this as much as you can. Trying to come off the rail. Mm, okay, he just stomp shots it. I think he miscued a little bit there. Unfortunate. So now he has a shot that Hunter would leave him <laughs> if he missed on purpose. It looks like he's going to use a 10 ball here. Yeah. What a nice little shot. He does leave Hunter a shot on 14, which is suboptimal, but he had that real, with a really good speed. He got the 10 on his side of the, the table. And now he's got three balls to his name. Oh, this is where we update the score because we know exactly what we're doing. Uh, there's a plus sign. Okay, we're gonna move that there. There we go. And now we will let's see. Way is it four? No, where's way score? Three. There we go. There we go. Okay. So we are up to date here. I'm assuming you gotta go for the 14 here. This is this is where I could learn to no, okay, he's going for the 14. I'm trying to realize what shot I would take versus what he's looking to take. The good thing is is that he will naturally get shape on the right side of the table. So he can get his ball closer and he would leave Jeff 
very little options except to make the eight the ten ball. So what's interesting here is that I would be incredibly concerned about that ten ball being so close to the pocket. And judging by how that shot was on the fourteen, uh he was not concerned at all about leaving a shot on the ten ball. Which is interesting. Part of what I'm trying to learn here, so this is completely selfish. I hope everybody's ready for this. <laughs> so I play a lot of nine ball and ten ball. Today was the first time I played any one pocket, but I'm trying to learn where the wiggle room is as far as, yeah, we're leaving him a shot, but what does he have after that? And I think this is where we're seeing this right now. Because your opponent don't win until you hit eight. So you got some wiggle room. So he does leave Hunter a pretty tough shot here next. I think he's he might have to read the stack a little bit. And we do need to update the score again. So now we're at four for Jeff. Nice. Really nice shot there. He's forced to kick there, and he hits the correct side of that ball, which is the bottom side. Hits it into the stack and gets the key wall hit the bottom short rail, which is perfect. Doesn't leave Jeff much here, so he's going to have to respond. I actually had a shot like that before, and I... In my second match, and I completely missed it all. So Jeff tries to bank the five, which I like really a lot. One, because he made it. Two, because he opens himself up to I just want you to sig my significantly more shots. <laughs> Problem here, so the obvious shot would be the six and the 15 if he can see it. I'm pretty sure he can see the 15. And if he can, you want to get the 15. Because making the six will smash right into the stack there. And that pushes a lot of balls onto Hunter's side. So that would be suboptimal. So sure enough, he's going for the 15. Nice. Gets a nice little put. Oh, no, less than stroke on it, but he gets on, on the rail, which I'm sure is not what he wanted, but sometimes you just want to make your the ball that uh, is given to you and then figure it out afterwards. Dang. All right. So I'm already learning. <laughs> so Jeff decides to pay, play a little combo bank here just to be able to control the cue ball. He knows that overall the cue ball will stop where he needs it to and that the object balls that he hit into for the combo will stay on his side of the table. And Hunter responds very quickly. Leaving Jeff on the stack. Jeff responds by pushing the stack ever so slightly in, his, in Hunter's direction, but it's enough to be able to give Hunter a tough shot on his next outing here. And you're not giving up too much real estate to Hunter's side of the table. <laughs> All right. You want to join me, Ricky? What are you, what are you doing over there? Let me, uh, let me light you up. <laughs> we got Ricky Carcamo. Carcamo? Carcamo. Carcamo. Oh, God. He's, uh... Hmm? Sure, it says negative. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So Hunter's a negative one here. No. Oh man, that looks so bad. <laughs> I don't know how to make that bigger, so we'll leave it as such. How was your experience today, Ricky? It was okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
tough draw at Hunter first round. Slightly tough, yes. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> oh. How was your experience playing home pocket for the first time? <laughs> it was good. Yeah. It was honestly, I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. So, my first match, I had Abernathy and he smoked me. Um, and then the second match, I had some guy named Greg. Apparently, he plays here on Wednesdays sometimes. He's definitely a one pocket player. Like, you can tell how they shoot, it's like so different. But I was able to win my first game. I was up 1 0, and then he got the last two. Yeah, it's not an easy game. It's mm. not. But I enjoyed it way more than I thought I would, and that was a fantastic shot. <laughs> what a great shot by Hunter. I'm going to go ahead and hit this uh, plus button here, real quick. And then we're going to go back to. He's the guy. And Hunter owns one, right? Yes, he did. So he's at zero. He's at zero. Yeah. Negative zero. <laughs> Here we go. All right. We're at zero three. What do you think he's going to go for now? Uh, okay. I need to preface this by saying I'm making it up as I go off. <laughs> uh, I kind of like looking at the 12 or the 11 right now. The problem is you can't get too much action off of those two. Yeah, so he's trying to he's trying to keep the cue ball on the left side of the table. But he's trying to get as much speed. Okay. So that's okay. Well, I don't think that's what he meant to do, but I think I think what he wanted to do was put the cue ball. You know, get the cue ball back yes. down to the rail. He was willing so mm -hmm. exactly. So after he shot that, I'm like, okay. So he's absolutely willing to sacrifice whatever the layout may be, just to make sure the cue ball the cue ball get, is on the side the road. Yeah, that he wants. Uh, so, yeah, and they just spot that up. We're going to have to change yeah. I can't think. Oh, okay, we're looking at the stream now. I think he would have preferred if the cue ball was in the middle of the uh, rail. That was sick. Okay. Yes. He even jacked up. Lemire yeah. made a fantastic shot here for that nine ball. He's got a good, um, he, he can make this six. Yeah. And then get back up. Yeah, he got table. really good shape on that. Yeah. Problem is that seven and 11, maybe that seven goes. I don't think he's worried about that seven and 11 right now. Well, I maybe he's like probably at 12. Yeah. And then he's probably going to go into the uh, side rail to get back up to the one or the other ball. So yeah, what's, what's interesting here is that I would try to cut this, but in my mind, somehow, I think he might try to pank this. He's going to stun it. Like that. Yeah. Bottom draw. Get back up to the one. That's nice. There yep. Is. That's a fantastic shot. I'm going to keep pressing this plus, this plus button here, <laughs> even though it shows up on the score. <laughs> All right, everything's fine. So now... The next shot, he's pretty dead in here. I don't think he's going to get a good shot here. It all depends on how much action he can get on other cue ball. Yeah. He might just he might make the one and then... Stun it to the bottom side of the table, maybe? Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Try to push the floor. Running to the floor. Oh, man, there's a divot in that table. <laughs> that 11 dug in, said it was not moving. That's good. Okay. So now we got work to do, Hunter. <laughs> But with that in mind, he has caught up to Jeff. So Hunter plays a very slow shot here to play safe, giving minimal options for Jeff. And Jeff is probably just going to surprise he's playing that ball. I would have played the seven. Oh. I would have probably been. I would have probably played the seven. So, Jeff is actually in six. Oops. My apologies. Apparently, I lost track of where people made certain shots. So, Hunter's at four. He's going to have to play pretty tight here just to make sure he can grind out a win against Jeff. You don't want to give Jeff too many looks here. So now, nine, five, 
Yeah, that was like a while back. Yeah. Oh, I, I talked to him. Thank you. I try to I try to keep it up here. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Well, I think hunters would probably go for the bank here. Yeah. So this is the other thing that I was trying to understand. At what point do both players tighten up and they just start pushing balls towards the end of the table? This is probably my least favorite part about one pocket, <laughs> but Hunter makes something out of nothing. Now, okay, so this is what's interesting. He almost made that shot, and he had very little risk because if he did make it, he would have a better shot than Jeff has right now. So Jeff's looking to hit the right side of that. Oh, off the kick. Here we go. Okay, nice and soft. That might have come off the rail a little bit much, though. Yeah, I think he gave him the bank. Oh, no. He's looking at the... Uh... No, he's probably trying to get shape on that ball, but I think he's going to bank that ball. I think he's just trying to put more balls in his side on his pocket in there. Yeah. Oh, no, yeah. Good shot. That's very nice. Yeah, that was fantastic. So those are the, time, the types of shots I'm trying to identify, the ones that just have a higher probability of leaving you. Even if even though you're giving the shot back to your opponent, it leaves you in a much better position than when you approach the table initially. Oh man. My brain is fried. I think Jeff It's like drinking from a fire hose. Jeff can probably play this too really thin unless he can and so in a weird world, I think he could try and get that seven to his pocket and naturally the cue ball will float to the bottom right side of the table. But obviously, that's not what he's looking at. Mm, he's probably going to thin that, too, and break the cue ball all the way up, down. Is he trying to hit something? Like that. Oh, okay, okay. That's nice. Okay, so he had the he had the same outcome that I had in reference to the cue ball being in the bottom right side. It just, I was doing it off of trying to make the seven or get the seven closer to my pocket. I really wish I could have looked at that angle to see if my shot was even viable. So Hunter's going to try and push the two towards his pocket again. He's just going to crowd his pocket, and he might... Not really. Okay. What a good shot. So that's interesting. I think Hunter's looking at this like, okay, what shots can I get away for free? Like, even if I miss, it's going to leave Jeff nothing. And he plays... I mean, with that type of mentality, I think you really have to focus on pocket speed, too. Like, he's playing with very good speed. Even if he misses... His advantage is he's slowly grinding Jeff out of this game, even though Jeff has the advantage well, as far as from the score is concerned. All right, we're at uh, three, five, five. Actually, it's at five. Oh, my God. Okay, sorry. That's my bad. Sorry about the score here. I'm like, Try and pay attention to the technique much more so than the commentating. Okay, so we're at five. He needs three more. Wait, did I have it right? Five, two, eight. We're at uh, six. Six to four. Yeah, so I had it right. My apologies. There we go. Oh, six to four. Oh, yeah. I had it wrong. I think Jeff won for that. Probably wanted to leave him behind a seven. Did you play in the last uh, one pocket tournament? I did. Okay. How did I, you do there? I did a little better. I think I went two rounds. Okay. And I lost my next two matches. Because you didn't have Hunter in the first round. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. Yeah, he moves the ball really well. Trying to learn. That's what it tastes like. It tastes like over-minted mojitos. Well, it looks like Jeff is going to start clearing up um, in his bucket here. Yeah. Leonard's done a really good job of moving the remaining the remaining balls to his side of the table. However, that makes the directive that Jeff has that's much more clear. 
He hit that way harder than he needed to. He got away with it. You're about to find out. I think Hunter's not going to stare a gift horse in the mouth here and trying to make the 13. He's going to try to cut this ball? Yeah. Wow. Because he can hit this with a bunch of left hand bottom and get behind the 13 and the 14. The problem, sorry, the 11 and the 14. The problem is, is that, yeah, exactly. It's high risk, high reward. So he's probably going after the 7 2 row. Yeah. yeah. Like he's going for the more conservative shot. Yeah. Um, he, yeah, he slightly overhit that, but that's fine. I mean, he's still, he's doing what he's trying to keep his positioning from the last setup, which is having all the. All the object balls on his side of the table. I think with Hunter is the fact that he can keep parking balls mm -hmm. right next to his pocket. Puts a little bit more pressure on Jeff. And to Jeff's to Jeff's credit, I mean, he's Hunter is leaving him these banks that are not automatic by any means, but they are opportunities to capitalize on. So now, this is another learning experience for me. I have no idea how to hit this. It's going to spin it from the bottom row. Can he hit the back side of that? Like oh, that? just enough. That's yeah, insane. He's going to scratch. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That was my concern is that you lose a lot of the cue ball if you try to do something a little bit more out of the way like that. Now, to Hunter's credit he will be at three and jeff will be left with a really long shot here on a spotted ball and he's not going to have much to work with as far as what he's going to do next so you have to set up for a safety and i don't know do they call them safeties in one pocket <laughs> they just do. one pocket shots <laughs> they do but if jeff hits this ball he might have a bang okay right there that's interesting i like that a lot he sacrificed giving hunter the ball back which I like a lot because he gets one more point and he's literally just one point away from winning now. And Hunter doesn't have a way out. Hunter no longer has a ball right in front of his pocket. And he's going to take care of the seven. It's a nice little shift there. I feel like there has to be a softer way to hit that. He was just trying to Hide that ball too, you know? Yeah, he's just trying to get it out of there and keep the cue ball. So this is what I've been realizing as far as uh, like one pocket players. So they are willing to sacrifice a lot to make sure that they know exactly where the cue ball is going to land. I think that's the weakness. <laughs> that's mm. We need to exploit. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm taking well, notes. I'm taking notes. I think what they have is patience. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, I mean, if you know that, they... The know, flesh not. Oh, my God. Oh. Okay. Wow. Yeah, that was good, good speed. What would you do in this case? You banked that ball or... I'm getting a seven ball out of there. I think... I think oh, well, no, I'm, yeah. He's on the last ball. Yeah. So yeah. Just, offense. Yeah. That seven ball is not going to leave anything uh, for Hunter to play off of. He just makes us. Yeah, exactly. Like naturally, you're gonna leave a very tough shot on the seven, especially if that seven's off the rail. Like he can't spin this ball, and he has to hit this pure to make that. And that's, I think he's gonna focus on the uh, thirteen to get get the ball out of there. This is a tricky shot right here, though, because it makes Hunter think. He cuts that seven in. He mm -hmm. can get shape from the other balls, but obviously, he knows Jeff only needs one ball, so he's gonna get his out. He's prioritizing getting the ball out of there. Right. Plays very nice speed. Oh, my God. That was really nice. I was just... See? So, okay. That's another thing I learned. I'm just focused on getting the 13 out of there. Not only did he get the 13 out of there, he placed it very nicely in front of his pocket, and he got the cue ball all the way down the table. That was a great shot. I'm going to press this, even though it's probably very late. <laughs> you know what I noticed about wall pocket players? What's that? They always leave you against the rail. <laughs> yeah, it's almost as if that makes the shot infinitely harder. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah, <laughs> I hate it so much. <laughs> I 
So I think Jeff, he might, I don't think he has a way to play the bank on the 14 and he doesn't have as much. I think he's just going to try, he's going to try and play the cue ball up against Leonard's pocket here. Yeah. Like that. He doesn't have much wiggle yeah. room to make a, another shot there. So I don't dislike that. He did leave Hunter a bank there though. Does it get by the 14? I don't think it does. He's looking at it like a, it might be an opportunity. If anything, he just gets it closer to his pocket. Exactly. Like he can get a free shot. So this is what an example of what I was saying. Right like he gets a free shot at it. Gets a, another Ajiba closer to his pocket with very little punishment if he misses. Because that side pocket, the left side pocket is huge as far as having Jeff being able to bank this for his final point. <laughs> God, that plus. Oh, man. No way. That was, that was, strong. That was so strong. Yeah. He had to go for that shot, though. Yes. That was really strong. Fantastic shot. Covered by Jeff. Hit the plus button. <laughs> and then we're going to change all these scores to zero again. And Hunter. Down me. This is the other thing I have to get used to. I mean, I'm used to like races to seven. Like, you're down one. Your opponent's on the hill. I have to remember that one pocket matches are supposed to last a lot longer. Yeah. I think my second, my first match against Hunter didn't last too long. Yeah. But my second match. Did he make any like crazy shot to like get perfect shape? Yeah. Is that what and then he left me pretty much stuck on the uh, stack every time. No. Oh. Okay. So we got Abernathy. Now he's on the right stack pocket. This is. Uh... Oh, it's still. We're going to leave it as such. He continues to use the right side. Oh my God, that was a fantastic little shot there. So Hunter takes a stab at the bank here, and in that case, he absolutely he absolutely puts priority on keeping the cue ball on the stack there. So that was a nice little shot. Now I'm assuming that since Hunter is not on the hill and his opponent is, he's going to decide to play much more tight around any possible shots that he may have. And Abernathy does decide to uh, play... I don't know. That was kind of weak. <laughs> he, left, he left a 6 here for a runner. He could try and get shape for the 2. He could hit into the stack. Let's see what he does here. No. He's a really good shot. Nice. He gets two balls out of there. And now Jeff has to read the tea leaves <laughs> on the stack here. Yeah, I think the most important part was he protected his ball, you know? Yeah, that was great. And this is another powerful position. You have the stack in between the obvious shot that your opponent will try to make which in this case would be the 12 ball for Hunter. And Jeff has no choice but to play the stack against Hunter. This is interesting. Okay, so this is fun. So he has to spot this again, which is fine. Um, Hunter now has the stack in between his obvious shot. Oh, man. Okay. My brain. I need to, like, soak this up and remember this. I think Hunter's looking at that stack, see if he could push it towards his yeah, pocket. Yeah, yeah, So this is the downside. That's a perfect, yeah, that's that's good. That's good. The follow-up here is that Jeff is sacrificing, having Hunter being able to push more of the of the balls on the table available to him to his side of the, the table. This is almost like a free shot for Hunter. But he was left in a tough spot. That's it. I feel like my brain is growing. <laughs> <laughs> I 
even with this, Hunter is really taking his time to take advantage of it as much as he can. Yeah. Nice. Oh, well. Steve Freeman and Chris Brown, table three. So that's the difference. With me, I'm just trying to push as many of the of the object balls in my pocket. He was specifically trying to get one of the balls, in this case, a four ball. He read the stack and tried to get the four ball as close to the corner as he could. Yeah, he while got, still controlling the cue ball. Right? Yeah, he got a couple things done there. He pushed one ball towards his pocket, and then he was able to hide the cue ball behind the stack. That way, Jeff can get to his balls. I think I'm taking for granted how much. Like, there's one way. Like, okay, so Jeff showed us that he's willing to sacrifice the object balls to make sure the cue ball lands over here in the bottom left when he when he scratched or not when he scratched when he made a ball in the side pocket by accident. So Hunter expressed the same sentiment here, reading the stack, making sure that he, oh, wow, that's a nice shot. That was a really nice shot. So Hunter expressed the same sentiment by controlling the cue ball more and the object ball. So he found that the four ball could get closer to the pocket, his pocket, and he could, could, he could still control the cue ball to land on an unfavorable side here for Jeff. And now Jeff responds with a combo, which does... I would argue, I mean, that was really good. He uh, he got the uh, object balls farther away from Hunter's pocket. Not by much, but definitely less favorable for Hunter than they were before. But he does give Hunter a bank here on the three. And Hunter... Ooh. Okay, show me. Show me, Jeff. <laughs> show me how you get that through me. It's like Jeff is just gonna. I think he's just gonna roll it in. He's gonna give him this point just to get that escape out for Hunter. He did this against me. Oh no, he's gonna try. No, but oh, he's Karen. trying to get the fourteen out of there too. Oh, the twelve. Sorry. Oh no, what? He was so confident on that bank. All right, he's better one pocket player. <laughs> he had no doubt he was gonna make that. That would have been like I gotta get that three out of there or something. No, he's got the four ball too. <laughs> oh my god, I have so much to learn. See if we can go into this. That was fantastic. No, that was great. He made the bank knowing that he got natural shape on the four, and now he's up two points. And then now he's considering getting rid of the three. I would have been so focused on that three. And now he rolls it in. That's what he did to me before. Yeah, I'd have probably never looked at the bank. Yeah, that was great. That was fantastic. So fun. I hate learning a new game. I don't like being less good than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's something a part of me that that's what drives me to get better. Okay. So I'm going to take some easy little shot here to keep the cue ball as close to the bottom short rail as possible. We're at two to one. So here, man, this is tough. I think he left him in a tough shot, I think. He left him in a tough position here. I almost went up. Mm, I would look at the bottom side of that five ball, but he's looking at the 10 here. Oh, wow. What a shot. Wow. That's why I didn't look at the 10. I was like, that's a. <laughs> I'm asking the double kiss. Well, you see the way he played it in case he missed it. I don't think he gave Hunter the seven. He might have gotten given him the one at best. And one or the one or the uh, the six there. But you're those those are two you know, you're playing to maybe make it but definitely get it closer to your pocket. That was a great shot by Jeff. Jeff is on one right now. Hunter doesn't have much more time left. He needs to shift the momentum in his favor. Fantastic shot. Much. No, he's got the five. Five, man. Uh-oh. 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 U
He just needs three more. I don't think he has the three, though. If he stops the um, fifth, off the 15, can he bank the seven? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, he's, nope. he's like, yeah, he doesn't have much angle here. That's probably the least optimal part about this shot. But he can play the mm, not so though. Now he has to either play the stack or I think this is for me. This would be I have no idea what to do here because you can play off the one, but you lose control of the one, and that angle three rails goes to Hunter's pocket. Yeah, but he can go two rails to his pocket with the one. I mean, he has to cut it though, and you're leaving like you have to hit it hard enough to end up on the left side of the table again. Well, let's see what he no, does. I think he's gonna go two rounds. I think he's got enough on the lane. That's oh it. no, he just played his split. Ooh. Yeah, so he's so this is an example. Jeff absolutely sacrificing wherever the object ball ends up, just to make sure that the cue ball ends on the unfavorable side here. You have to talk to. Oh my god, no, this thing went limp on me. <laughs> we hate that. Okay. Look like Jeff is gonna be banking here. Jeff is like six. Ooh, ooh, that looks pretty good up until it double kissed. He does get a nice little spot here for Hunter. Hunter does not have an automatic shot here. He might bank the uh, 13. No, he's looking to hit into the stack. Okay. Hunter is definitely realizing that he's getting unfavorable little rolls here. But for the most part, Jeff is making some fantastic shots. No doubt. Jeff is going to go into that too and leave him into the stack. Yeah, he's going to stick him to the stack. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think he wanted to get a little bit more of that. Push it right into the stack, but. And I only say that because you don't, the only person you don't want to leave any room at all to play with is Hunter. <laughs> oh, I know that. <laughs> Tell me more about it. <laughs> I forgot about it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We uh, <laughs> called this associating. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So he does play it into the stack, hits a combo there. And Jeff's going to do the same thing and try to control the cue ball, but hit the 11 ball down the table. Okay. So he, he he hit this with a little bit more juice to get it closer to his pocket. I like that a lot. What I'm starting to realize with one pocket is that you got to get as much done with the one shot that you have. So some people would just be like, control the cue ball. But if you can control the cue ball and get a ball closer to your pocket, you're getting much more done with one shot. And he's going to bank this. One rail. Classic one pocket shot. Um, let's try he leaves a cut, he cut here or a bank. So he has a cut on the eight and a bank on the seven. I'm assuming he's going to go for one of those two. He looks like he's looking at the eight cut. Does that uh, 13 go? The orange stripe there? If he gets shape on this? Because those are the last two balls that he needs. I don't think the 13 goes, honestly. No. Well, no. Um, he was trying to get a good little hit on that. I think now all he's got is a bank. That was Bruce. That was a great shot. That was a great shot. Right. How often do you get out to play one pocket? Honestly, once a year. <laughs> once a year. This yeah, game. pretty much. I'm about to join that club here, Ricky. Yeah, <laughs> I like it a lot, though. Man, I, that's a stupid part of it. Like, I think I'm always gonna like nine ball or ten ball better, but there's a part of me that doesn't want to be bad at any games. Yeah, but. Just like everything, you got to start somewhere, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so all of that for iron. You see, one pocket is it's very interesting because it's you got to learn it. It teaches you how to how to move the cue ball. Yeah, 
but it, like so i say yes as if like i'm realizing that but as good as a pool player that Abernathy is, like I'm starting to realize how much of a priority you're putting on making sure you know where that cue ball is going to land after every shot. So now Hunter played that pretty nicely. Still has the 11 ball in front of his pocket, and he gave Jeff. I don't think does he have a cut on that? So I don't think he does. He's not shooting at it like he does. Yeah. So I think Jeff might go for this too. Hmm. And try to get off the seven, maybe. If it was me, I would be looking at making his ball because the balls are too wide open. Oh, but I oh, mean, oh, when you hit him like that, oh my god, oh my god, that is game. That is game. That is game. That is a fantastic game. <laughs> We're gonna hit the replay there. Hunter goes into the loser side of the bracket. How about that? Huh? <laughs> Thanks for commemorating this. <laughs> no, no, nothing. Great shooting by Jeff, though. That was a fantastic game. So now Hunter goes on the loser side. Jeff continues in the... Huh? Dude, that was insane. Now, hey, I lost it. <laughs> I lost the match. How am I supposed to win against the guy who wins against Hunter White? <laughs> <laughs> That was insane. That was a strong show on my Jeff, though. Hell yes. He put up some pretty good shots, and he went offensive the whole way. Yes, he did. And he got rewarded handsomely. So now we got Eddie Little and who was the other one? Mike Davis. Mike Davis. Another really strong matchup. Oh, give me a moment here while I rearrange everything. <laughs> 